Another season of The Bachelorette has come and gone, and while this season with Tasha Adams and Claire Crawley has truly been the most dramatic ever, at least until the next season comes along, it's become clear that while we had two leads and two love stories in one season, we also had two diametrically opposed feelings for each one. This one good, this one bad. At least if the vast majority of comments are to be believed. I certainly expressed that when it came to Claire's season I was exhausted, and when Taisha took over, that changed to excitement. And I won't lie, my feelings for Taisha being the lead were strong because I willed them to be. With all the hype that was heading into the season, and the messiness of Claire's portion of the show, Taisha really didn't have to do much at all. All she had to do was walk in at that point, and I was like... Hey, shut up. Just shut up. You had me at hello. But I guess the question then becomes, why? Why this bad, and this good? Why will Taisha be fondly remembered, barring some future disaster? Sorry, I feel like I need to say that now. And Claire not looked back on at all because no one really wants to. Not to mention, Taisha's season, in comparison to seasons past, had so much less going for it. A lead swap over mid-season, a bachelor bubble, one-on-one -on -one dates that seemed to be organized by saying which pool are we going to hang out in today, or dates that had Chris Harrison cracking the whip and forcing those poor interns to hide behind curtains and make spooky noises, or stay up all night filling these pinatas. Still, I guess it's better than going to Cleveland. Peter's gonna meet you in Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. I kid, I kid. But speaking of Peter's season, think of everything that had at its disposal. Exotic locations, crazy one-on-ones and group dates, and yet Tasha's season at La Quinta felt so much better. Why? Well, let's take a deeper look and grade Tasha's season, and we're going to grade it on four major talking points. The lead, the cast, production, and romance. Then, if possible, compare it to Claire's time. And I'm going to base most of it off of entertainment value, as while a season can have lots of drama, sometimes it's not fun to watch. Same goes for romance. Watching two people fall in love is no fun if it's boring or you don't care about them. So, let's start here, with the lead. Now, Tasha was set up for an incredible amount of success this season. The rumors that circulated around her coming in after Claire that created hype and anticipation way back in July, then how tired we were of the drama in Claire's season, ready for a change, and Taisha took all of that hype and did what very few leads have been able to do in the past. She didn't blow it. She handled the drama when it came her way. Oh. He could... Drama, drama. Oh. Here we go. No. Don't be smiling. She consistently sent men home after sitting them down and having a discussion. At least once things got more serious, that is. But mostly, she was a listener. If you really sit down and watch the season, Taisha does a whole lot more listening with her guys than she does talking. Now, I don't know if this was all Taisha, or if some of this was the edit that focused more on the guys, but having so many of those lengthy discussions with the men, in turn, helped us get to know her cast. As a result, even though we had a shorter amount of time with the men, I felt a better understanding of them. I grew to like them more. We also got conversations that were more grounded in reality and not as much fantasy. Subject matter that, honestly, I doubt would have even been touched upon in years past. Or, if it were, would possibly end up cut from the final edit. Was this because of the bubble? Was this because Taisha invited it more? Was this because production invited it more, or allowed it to be in the final edit of the show? Did they need to focus on these conversations instead because the one-on-one -on -one dates were more casual this season? I honestly don't know, but I enjoyed it. How many times in the past have we had dates where they're saying things like, our relationship is really growing, or our conversations were so great today, but they either weren't or we didn't get to see those conversations? Perhaps it's because they had nothing else to do at La Quinta but sit and talk. Either way, I felt that this time around we got to see the relationship journey, at least when it came to the final four guys. So, Taisha as a lead gets an A. The only, only strike against her the number of returning guys that were allowed to stay. Now, I don't have a problem with these guys returning and Taisha needing time to think it over if she wants them back. It's more about them returning to rose ceremonies. I feel like that was TV stuff and the decision should have been separated from the other men. But hey, I guess you have to play ball with production a little bit or it all turns to a mess. Now, on the other side of the season, what about Claire? I know many would give her an F, and if the grading was only based on if they end up in a successful relationship, I guess she'd get an A. 
I'm giving her a D. So why does Claire get a much lower score than Taisha? I want to express one thing first. Claire's season was edited. Now, how much of that final cut was her, and how much of it was bad editing from producers, I don't know. And we may never truly know. Regardless of your opinion of her, it's just a fact that everything on this show is edited. But the downfall for Claire, whether it's the real Claire or a Claire edited together for the show, is the same thing all of her promos were touting. Respect. Respect. Or rather, lack thereof. Because I don't have a problem with her falling in love quickly, or having a frontrunner, or having high expectations. As long as along the way, you're respectful. And the edit Claire got was that, quite often, she wasn't with the other men, except for maybe with Dale. For example, spending time with Dale while all the other guys waited around for her, then cancelling group dates. Or being upset when the guys roasted Dale as they were asked to do. Or seemingly rushing through chats in alone time. Or the naked dodgeball date, which yes, some men were fine with, and yes, this is more of a production thing, but the end result of it is the same. It felt like little respect was given to these men. Barring a couple of guys who of course made themselves look bad. It also feels worse the longer we go into the season, even past Claire's time, as the group of men who we barely got to see with Claire turned out to be one of the strongest group of guys in a while. Men like Ivan, Brendan, Zack, Dr. Joe, Damar, all ignored in that initial part of the season and given next to no screen time. Now Ben did get some time with Claire. At the end of the day, if she picks me, then this is the greatest love story that's ever been told. That got cut from the show, and Riley barely got some time with her, but relatively still ignored. Even so, my spidey sense is telling me Claire got the short end of the stick when it came to that edit. But because I can't say for sure, and even still, you can't blame everything on editing, Claire gets a D. But at least she got her man, so we'll say D for Dale. I feel like I just met my husband. May they live happily ever after. I really hope they do. And when comparing the two, Claire and Taisha, both bachelorettes for season 16, it's that term respect that differentiates why we have the warm and fuzzies for one, and not for the other even though both left the show with a ring on their finger. So now, let's move on to the cast. This one's easy because it was, for the most part, the same cast throughout the show. And we got a great group of guys. I've seen posts online for Dr. Joe for Bachelor, Damar for Bachelor, Ivan for Bachelor, Riley for Bachelor, Zach or Ben or whoever doesn't win, or all of the above for Bachelor in Paradise. I've seen I'm a Bennett stan, or I'm with Noah, or I'm devastated Brendan's gone, or that hand crusher guy sure is living up to his name because I'm crushing, I'm crushing hard. One of those previous statements was a lie, but you can't tell which one. So what's the difference between this group and, say, a group like Peter's or any other season deemed to have a less than great cast? Well, for one, I think it comes back to that point of Tasha the Listener, and that there seem to be a lot more personal conversations coming from the guys. And those touching stories, that genuine sharing of vulnerable moments, gives us a reason to root for them. Because, in a way, that helps us understand that when we're in those moments, we too can come out of it with a happy ending. We also had relatively no drama. I mean, sure, there was Schmedium Shirt and Chicken Legs, or the Mustached Crusader versus Harvard Boy, but those were entertaining because these guys were, generally, risk-free or non-threatening. By that I mean it was pretty clear they weren't going to win Tasha's heart. To borrow from a great mind... There's zero percent chance that you end up with Tasha. Everyone here knows it. So there was no pulling our hair out wondering, oh my gosh, is Ed actually going to get the final rose? And when Ed pulls out Carlos and starts rumbling with Chasen, we're not as annoyed. It's kind of fun. Throw in a date with Chris Harrison and I might actually like to see Ed in paradise. He's non-threatening. On the other side of things, think of the drama Ben, Brendan, Zach, and Ivan got into. Almost none. Then there's the number one factor that leads to me liking anyone in this show, being genuine. Which is sometimes tough to find in this franchise. And if this had been a year with Paradise right after it, we'd be excited to see so many of these faces show up at the beach. This group is getting an A+. Alright, next up is the dreaded production category. How did the team handle the season? Did it look like their hands were all over it? Did things seem forced? Did they do the contestants wrong? The one thing I have to say to production this year is... Congrats. They pulled off the bubble. They got through a whole season without causing an outbreak or getting the whole crew sick. They managed to get families there safely, including Ivan's dad, who is immune compromised. And with the exception of the talk about Claire's edit and all that, most of the show's handling of drama was within the range of acceptability. 
Yeah, the Ed knocking on Chris Harrison's door thing seemed like it had some extra push there. Yeah, there was that time Dale walked through the door that just happened to have Claire in it with someone else. Oh, uh -oh. Whoa, get out Wrong of here. Wrong door? <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm gonna respect you. Ah. Yeah, there were all the guys who returned from elimination, or the fact that they even had that dodgeball date. But this season could have easily not happened at all, so for that, it's an A- minus for production. It was frustrating to watch things string together for the first four episodes, but after that, it was a lot of fun. Which leads us to... the romance. It feels like it's been so long since the season has delivered on the romance. This one did. And romance is not just the end result. It's how we get there, it's how we start to like a couple and root for them over time. We got a season, at least with Taisha, where the romance came first, and any and all drama was secondary to that romance, or actually supported the romance. We had a season with two engagements, and one where the finale with Zack and Taisha was beautifully done. One of my favorite moments that production pulled for the ending was Zack yelling taxi, and them pulling out in the taxi cab. The same one from their hometown date. It's frickin' cute because it all comes full circle in that moment. It's the payoff, the moment when the inside joke from earlier comes back in a satisfying way. In Sleepless in Seattle, when Rita Wilson emotionally recounts an Affair to Remember's meeting on top of the Empire State Building, and that eventually happens with Tom Hanks. Movie. Or when Bill Nighy tells the world he'll strip naked on TV if his song makes number one, and then he does. And I'm gonna say it again, it feels genuine. We, as viewers, genuinely want to watch people find happiness. So, the romance gets an A, giving Tasha season an overall grade of A. But before we go, why don't people feel that same way about Claire and Dale? Well, some do, true, but people don't seem to have the same sentiment about them as with Zaysha. I think it's because the romance became secondary to the drama. Because, as far as the show is concerned, that early drama helped support why Claire leaves, and lifted the entrance of Tasha and her subsequent engagement. Claire's season needed to be bad in order for Tasha's to be great. On top of that, we got all the things in Tasha that we craved we'd gotten from Claire. Someone who gave each man a chance, who stepped aside when it counted in order for us to get to know, and thus root for, the men of the season. Who, for the most part, cut the drama before it happened, and who displayed respect. That's why Tasha's season was so much better than Claire's. But be warned, Bachelor producers, as seasons get back to normal, as bubbles go away and lockdowns are lifted, remember what made this season successful despite everything it had going against it, and hold on to that. Hold on to the romance, the conversations that were had, and the kind of guys who were a part of this season. The drama will always be there, but without the rest, it's Peter's season all over again. <laughs> So that's it for this video grading Tasha's season. I hope you enjoyed it, and give the video a like and subscribe if you did. We're gearing up now for Matt James' season, which is just days away, so there's a lot more to talk about. And until next time, Bachelor Fantake, out. I might just... Had... Shut up. Just shut up. You had me at hello.